we've been talking a lot about the business of sports uh, here, Steve, and probably no business has grown uh, as much, at least not here in the U.S., as the National Basketball Association. The current television broadcast rights set to expire sometime in mid-2025. I know negotiations have already begun, at least with current partners, but there's a lot of speculation right now about how much the NBA will broaden its reach in terms of the TV rights and the TV partners it has. Well, we're very optimistic. Uh, uh, viewership has never been higher. It's been a fantastic season, great competitive balance, and uh, wonderful playoffs. So, so things are looking up for the NBA. It's a global game, and uh, we continue to to uh, build the business in Africa and overseas. And so, really exciting times ahead. In order to sort of reach a lot of the new folks, as well as even the current crop of uh, fans that you have in the league here, there is some concern here that over the last few years, if you wanted to watch an NBA game, there were really only a couple of places that you can do it. You know that how we watch TV, how we consume media has changed a lot, even over the last five years. When you anticipate what a new contract, a new broadcast contract looks like, do you think it's going to be a much wider number of companies involved than what we currently have? Yes, that's been the trend, the trend in the NFL, the trend in all sports, so more people can see more games. Uh, fundamentally, a lot of these valuations have been driven up by the fact that certainly basketball and, and soccer are global games. And, uh, and, and with the streaming capability and the ability to reach millions and millions of customers, you know, we used to measure the fan base in, in millions, and now it's tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and even billions as far as football goes. As we see valuations for the popular sports, the soccers of the world, the NBAs of the world, we've also seen investors now start to look at, I guess, what can be considered second-tier sports, whether you're talking about something like lacrosse or uh, even something uh, as what was once obscure like pickleball, uh, at least as a professional sport. Have you taken any interest in that sort of tier uh, of sports leagues? Yes, yeah, so PAGS Group Sports, our, our family office, we've looked at several opportunities. And again, uh, I think sports is compelling programming, and there's going to be a trickle-down effect into all these other leagues. So people will start have the capability of watching lacrosse or watching pickleball um, because it's compelling programming. So I think you're going to see growth in those in those ancillary sports. I am curious about uh, your career in private equity. I know you've stepped away from your main role uh, at Bain Capital earlier this year. Uh, there are, I think personally, some parallels to the growth that we've seen in the private equity space over the last couple of decades and the growth that we've seen in the interest in valuations in sports franchises over that same period of time. Is there a material difference in how you approach what you did at Bain and the companies that you were involved with at Bain and what you're doing now in the world of sports? It's actually very similar. Uh, there, there are similar dynamics in, in sports you, you need to have a great operation. You want to build a championship team. You have to have fantastic management like we have at the Celtics. Um, so there are a lot of parallels. Uh, the great news is there is a tailwind in, in, in the growth. And private equity, it's been a misnomer in the past, maybe 40 years ago, private equity was known for taking out costs. Today, the industry is competitive and really focused on building businesses, and they want to build growth businesses. So, so it's, it's very similar in that aspect. People want to buy and invest in companies that can grow, and sports is a, is a very growing property throughout the world. All right, Steve. Well, one of the reasons why we wanted to talk to you specifically on this week is because the National Basketball Association draft was held Thursday uh, here uh, in New York City. There was a lot of discussion about, I guess, who would be picked first. I don't think the discussion really uh, veered too far away from, I guess, the man that everyone thinks is going to be the future of this league. When the mania, I think, is what they're calling it right now. What do you make of him? And more importantly, I think, what he can mean uh, for the league and what it can mean for new viewership. Well, the league has been fortunate in, in that, you know, I've, I've been following it for, for 40 years now. And uh, we had the, the, the Larry the Magic, you know, Michael Jordan age. And now there are more stars than ever in the league. So if you look down the list, there are 30, 40, what I'd call transcendent players. And uh, and, and Wemby Mania, you know, is going to be amazing. He's he's one of the most skilled big men we've ever seen. He can do it all, um, not unlike LeBron when he came in. So uh, high hopes for him to, to kind of lead the next generation. You had Adetokounmpo out there. 
and it's only going to be great for the league to have even more stars. But he is he definitely has all the tools and all the skills to be a transcendent player, and it's going to be exciting to watch him. It's going to be tough to play against him, but exciting to watch him. Well, let's talk about uh, the Celtics and, and your uh, the structure of what this team is going to look like over the next year. I guess one of the sort of a news uh, that did shock a lot of people over the last couple of days was the trade of one of your star players, Marcus Smart, and the acquisition of, I guess, another star player in Christian Przinskis. Yeah, the toughest thing in this in sports is, uh, you know, we all love Marcus Smart, um, and uh, but 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 the general the, the goal in Boston is to win championships, and to do that, you have to put the best team out there that you possibly can. So uh, our our team has studied this, and we needed more strength up front. And Porzingis is is a fantastic uh, player that will really add a lot and to our to our club and allow us to contend for a championship. And Marcus will you know be forever remembered here for for his leadership and and heart and. And that's really the toughest thing. Um, I love the Celtics and love sports, but the toughest thing is is, uh, is is seeing some of these fantastic players, you know, go to new opportunities. Marcus will make a huge difference down in Memphis, and you know, we 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 wish him well. And we thank him for everything that he's done here, and uh, and 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 hopefully our team is positioned to contend again and and hopefully get a championship. We came very close the last couple of years, and we hopefully we can push it over the top.